Welcome back everybody to the wheat fields. Today what we are doing is we're going to be learning how to make our paths look amazing. And really what I would like to do today is is kind of address a few things which I get asked quite a bit and it's actually weird it's kind of strange that this is the case, but I get asked fairly often to do a tutorial on paths. And it seems that a lot of people have struggles with, well, a struggle to make paths look interesting or, or just get them to work. So I thought what I would do is make this like an unofficial episode on, well, an unofficial tutorial episode on how to make paths. So if, if this is something that does strike your fancy, that is awesome. This is also going to be a normal episode as well. So it's going to kind of just have a few pieces in it where you might learn something cool and a few pieces where you are, you'll be looking at some cool buildings as well. So first of all, Let's go through some of the logic behind us making these paths, because I've been doing a bit of work here, trying to work out a good way of making the paths through this field a little bit, a little bit more interesting, because they can be fairly boring, and not to mention all the, all the wheat by itself. Man, it's looking good, by the way. Look at that. You can see I've put in a few more pieces, and it's slowly coming through. I haven't actually AFK'd too much around this area uh, to get this stuff here to grow. I did. I actually AFK'd over there, but it was just too far out, out of the range of this stuff. But that's fine. So, a few things that I, I can maybe point out about what we've got here, and the probably the first thing that I would, I would recommend thinking about while making these paths is to just think about your direction. Because, really, this path over here is leading to those two logs over there. <laughs> uh, but going around big objects, pulling it around, making sure that there's no long straight lines is a very great way to, to break up a person's view. You can see, looking through this wheat, this is actually uh, probably a bad example of my, my logic behind you, but looking at a lot of stuff that is all very flat and very much, I'd say like a monotone in terms of the, the, the direction, I guess, not monotone, but you know what I mean, like just plain flat nothing too special going on that starts to hurt you in fact here we go look at this you can see this is actually something i've messed up on this over here this is a very straight line going all the way across from there to here that doesn't look very good when you look at this it, it makes it look very blocky and i understand we are playing minecraft and it's a game about blocks but it's fine we we can make a few little changes and very easily get this to look a lot better so if we just do that we'll grow these up grow oh well i guess you know what that's gonna stay Something like that breaks up that blockiness. You can see already it's looking a little bit better. We can maybe just put a little bit of something there. And this path is already, in shape-wise, looking a little bit different. So this would be like my shape and uh, direction suggestion. I would recommend just doing that. Getting a little bit of a, a curve in it. Look at that. Coming around here. Looking pretty cool. Uh, then a few other things also. is uh, Going up with, with half slabs does make it feel a little bit more uh, smoother. Because obviously if you had a big flat piece like this look at this here for instance coming up to there you have to go up there jump that's not very it doesn't look very good to the eye it looks like a, a solid piece but when you've got this for instance it just drops up nicely just very very shallow bump up easy that's those are a few things that i would recommend and that's a very very basic thing but i guarantee you if you've been having a lot of trouble making your paths that may very well be what's holding you back is just not going in a good direction not breaking it up enough and this would go the same for i guess just building planning out your, your villages and stuff making sure you've got a house in the way of another path or something so that you can have the path go around because i understand in a city or a village it's incredibly easy to just go ahead and and make everything in a straight line make all your houses along a straight road but try your hardest to to try go around that in fact if you if you want an example of that uh, go check out our main city uh, any any videos on that that's there's some good examples of how we've gone around fixing that piece up so now that we've got through that i i think we'll uh we'll have to sleep anyway but i want to show you a cool little little trick i used remember last episode if you don't you didn't see last episode but last last episode what we were doing is we were talking about potentially uh giving a go with changing the wheat texture to make it random as it goes so it doesn't have this very flat look to it which I'm not gonna lie, it's it's kind of growing on me. Looking at this, look at that. That's oh, the sun going down. Man, this is like a that's a screenshot right there. Look at that. That is beautiful. Uh, so with this field going out like this, I wanted to make a few changes. But what I've decided to do is go ahead with some of this normal grass. So that's just plain grass here. Let's go down around here. It doesn't look as good from the top, but around there, it looks like a few things of wheat, or there wouldn't be bushels of wheat. Just a few of these these crops have not fully grown, or maybe they've got weeds in them, and that breaks it up just a little bit, and I think that does a great job of just doing it. Now it's getting a bit a bit too dark. 
But man, uh, this actually could be kind of cool at night. Where's that light coming from? Kind of freaky. Yeah, I, I think this will be a, a fun time in the in the dark. One little issue with the darkness over here is mobs end up spawning not on there, but in a few of the on a few of the blocks, and then they end up trampling my crops. So it's the best solution to just get away from here as quick as possible and not let them do anything, because they are they are pretty bad along with sheep. Sheep are destroying this place. Now that we're aware of this direction and, and really the illogical purpose of paths, I guess, in building things a bit a bit nicer, I guess, to look at. Uh, one of the things that we are going to be doing is building a barn over there. And that's where those two those two pillars over there, that's what they mark out. Where we're going to be putting the barn. And really, the just the direction for where I'm putting this path. Now, of course, you could already have something. You could be planning something. It's it's all up to you. But that's that helps me generally having a, a point to break through the wheat and get through that. And... Besides that, also, I guess that there's another little tip. This is just something in building in general uh, that I would recommend, is building your, your surroundings before you build the, the exact object that you want to build. For instance, if I want to build that barn there, I could do it one of two ways. I could build the area around it and then build the barn, or I could build the ba barn and build the area around it. I personally like to build the area around it, then break that area out, for instance, like what we're doing with these paths. And then from there, I like to go ahead and uh, start building my buildings. It's just a personal preference thing, but I feel like it looks a little bit better when I end up doing it that way. Just a, just a little bit of a, a thought, I guess, if you, if you guys didn't necessarily think that way. Maybe it might help you. So today what we are going to do is we're going to focus on where this path splits up. Because that's another point of interest. It makes things a little bit cooler than what just a plain path would do. And of course, just a few little decorations and stuff are useful. But what we want to do, and this is kind of actually silly because I don't have any... It's, it's com both convenient and a bit silly because I don't have any rockets on me. But what we want to do is we want to make this path over here flow on towards the path over there. So where we've come off this main path over there, where we've just started this little bit off over here, we've come down, gone around, and now what we'd like to do is also have one connecting a bit further up over there. So that's the path that we're going to be doing today. And the exact reason why I like to do what I do. So... For instance, build this here and break it up. And this is actually going to be kind of interesting the way we're going here. So you can see, I like to just take this area out. And really what we'll do is we'll just get a little bit done. I won't do all of this, but oh yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to empty that. <laughs> you know what, if we, if we lose the wheat, it's fine. I've got so much wheat around us now. It's crazy. So basically what I like to do with these parts is I like to add in a little bit of texture as soon as we can. Because that will help us out a lot. So there's, there's a few things I'll break it down to. Shape adding texture, and then adding in a kind of a way of holding the path in. So by decoration, I'd say. Probably probably something similar to these sorts of fences. And that's what we're going to do right now. Let's also grab some of these out, and we'll just place them around the place so that we have them growing for us immediately. Because we need all this to be path, because we're going to be using actual path blocks. And that's another thing. Uh, don't get... This is like... This is one of the, the things that happened when these path blocks came out. Is it was so easy just to always rely on a path block they are beautiful blocks oh don't get me wrong i, I love path blocks because you see how there's this little color difference when you've got a whole block instead of a, a, a partial block i don't actually have any here like a here we go for instance the wheat the the farmland that the wheat's growing on is actually a transparent block so as soon as you have this one which is a full block which is the coarse dirt and that one there you can see that's lighter on the side where there's a little bit of a little bit of a transparent block. It's a little thing I I've picked up on, and it's actually quite cool to to just use in general. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what I just mistakenly did there, and uh, and leave that like that. So we'll we'll just do that there. So a few ways to add the texture into the path. I like to use, for instance, this one, a bit of coarse dirt because coarse dirt, first of all, you can place next to one of these, and in fact, it's actually quite good to just place next to these crops as if. The, the land was tilled. It's not walked on, but there's still a little bit of dirt. And I think that works quite well. So adding in a little bit of that is quite useful. And it, it's sort of a similar way to how you would do... Uh, how you do your standard walls and stuff. Where you'd use a fairly basic block and then add the detail with the other stuff. I think that's a that's a good way to look at it. Adding a little bit of... A little bit of ba basic blocks, I guess, being the path block. And then a, a few things around the place. Not too much. That's one way to do it. Another thing that I like to do is is add in a few rocks around here. This is obviously a natural path. Uh, have, having a proper path in a city, that's a whole other story. But I'm sure there's a lot of things that kind of go across them. So stuff like that adds in a little bit of detail, a little bit of texture to the path. But here we go. Here's one little, little problem. Is going around here, this area here looks a bit flat. We can try something else. 
try these sorts of things, like a, a thing here. In fact, I'll show you my little trick. If I do this here, you see how that that path block doesn't change? But if you do this like that, do you see how everything went dark? Look at this. Just look carefully again. Around here. It's beautiful. That's a, that's a perfect way of doing it. So those are a few things. Now, of course, we could go into the decorating of it, which I think works quite well in terms of what we do. And it, it does definitely do exactly what I, I hope it does, which is block this area off to make it feel like it's an actual an actual hugging a path that's hugging you i guess is is the way to think of it is the path is holding you in you don't want to go off the path because i mean really that's what you're building your path in your world for uh, think about someone walking through your world would they think hey i've got to go there i mean if you if you didn't have these you may very well get lost in this so having a few little pieces like this broken fences just to hold places in for instance there i'll have to get rid of the block below it that's just this is just me i i just like to do that <laughs> so there and maybe just decorate the fences a bit with, with some of this. Uh, no, not that. That there. Just stuff like that. It adds a lot of character to it. And obviously when the when the ground gets changed over to grass all completely, we'll be able to move over there. But doing these sorts of things really help just to make this place look a little bit more interesting. And break it up a bit more and hold, hold places in. So those are a few things that I think probably will help. So if they do, or if I've maybe done a terrible job... Uh, let me know in the comments because I would I'd like to help you guys out because if a lot of people ask the same sorts of questions It must mean that a lot of people really need to know these answers. So if I can if I can impart some of my Ridiculous amount of hours played on Minecraft to someone at least a bit of wisdom I, I'd, I'd love to so definitely let me know if, if this helps or if there's any other things you guys need any help with in terms of building and stuff like that I definitely could could probably figure something out so that's the paths. Now what we want to do as well is go into a broader a broader view of this place, the entire field. And in fact, what we can do is we can actually go and ender pearl up there. Let's just get our get our ender pearls. In fact, let's check how much of an ender pearl master I can be. From this rock here, can I hit that tree? Because I'm gonna have to aim a little bit up. I think that could be it. Oh no. <laughs> but it works nonetheless. Around here, what we are doing is we're making this path here, of course. That was the path we were just dealing with. Uh, that that looks a little bit ugly now, but just wait. Wait a second. We will get this. That's going to go off in that direction there. However, this field is still pretty flat, and I want to make it look a little bit more, more a little bit more interesting than what it is because it's very simple to get this place to look very simple. That's, that's the problem, and we don't want very simple. So the next stage that I want to do is I want to break off a little bit of this land over here down by probably... Probably actually down this way here, I would imagine, or maybe that way and that way. And what I want to do in this situation is a little thing called crop rotation, I'm pretty sure it is. And I've, I learned about this a very long time ago, but basically the idea is farmers can't just keep growing the same thing on the same ground. Because if, if one plant takes a certain thing from the ground, say wheat takes a lot of a particular nutrient, it's going to eventually deplete that. So you need a, a plant that will be able to come in create a bit more of that nutrient and then you grow your wheat on that again so what i'd like to do is maybe do something similar to that or maybe just make a place where maybe the crop the, the farmer didn't and there's a place growing a bit slower i want to do that just to break the area up oh boy this area is starting to come together a lot more just by adding in these very small details and i'll just go walk around here just so you can kind of take in a few of the different pieces the most important thing that changed the view from down here has been just adding in these tufts. Look at that. That little tuft of, of grass in there. And that just breaks the wheat field up completely in a vanilla way as well, which is amazing. That is exactly what we wanted to get done. Now, carrying on around here, I, I'll show you. I've just, I've just been going over here over and over again. Walk back that way. Walk this way again. And, and kind of see where I, where I think a few things should change. So... Very small details, for instance, removing and adding some of these things. I found that also, because the path block's on the same level as that there, that makes it really difficult to to get it to look very different. So occasionally adding in some stuff just next to it, just to make it feel a bit a bit more like it's a separate piece of land and not that uh, that this is on the same level. Just, I found that that looks a little bit better. Besides that, we, I mean, now the trees is a backdrop. They don't really work too well, but adding in some little trees on the edge have worked very well, and even just next to the path over here, have worked fantastically to try and break this path up and make it a bit more interesting. But, I'm going to say that there's one thing that has made a very great difference, and as as per usual, the comments are a fantastic spot for, for great ideas. 
And this one here comes from a fellow survival builder and fellow YouTuber by the name of Fwip. F Whip, basically. And he came up with the great idea for when, when he was doing his own wheat fields to do single paths around through the field. And I haven't actually got to this path. I've been waiting for it to slowly come around. And uh, I guess we, we're pretty much there. So what, I was, what it was, was to just add some of these small paths which go through the fields as if someone stepped on them and, and walked through them. And I actually do not want this one over here to be a grass block. So I'll quickly change that before. I guess that was just uh, inevitable. That was going to happen. Okay, we'll, we'll replace that. But yeah, basically adding in these little paths do a wonder, a wonderful, wonderful job of breaking this place up. And I'll show you what it looks like from afar because I was busy doing these these green pieces, these little green tufts, which are just around the field. And they started to look kind of funny. And you might see some things that look a bit weird over there. I should have put some bone meal as well. Came a bit unprepared, but that's fine. And by the way, I've also got some really awesome shot I want to show you guys of this place. Uh, just give give me some time. I will, I will show you this. this. This is actually what I'm what I'm going to show you is absolutely awesome. Uh, but but just give it some time. It's uh, we have to get this path in. So these little paths. I mean, I guess this isn't really the same concept of path building. Like, well, the idea of what some people might be looking for in paths as was before. Uh, but this over here is a fantastic way of, of getting your field to be broken up a little bit better than it was before. And that was not intentional to put that one there. I guess I'll just have to go uh, go over again with a bit of a bit of bone meal, but that's fine. There we go. Perfect. And also, if you guys are wondering, I have put mending and I'm breaking <laughs> on that. I bet you I bet you weren't expecting that, but it eventually had to ha it had to happen. There's there's no way I would have gone through another one or two of those after our first one so it's it really did not make sense for me to keep going on with that so maybe there and just a few random pieces like that there we go not very obvious kind of hides it a little bit and i'll show you what it looks like from the top right around here so if we go all the way out this way this in all fairness going up all the way on the top here you get a bit of a different view of things but going from here look at that that's where we've added it in it just creates a little bit of a, a fault in the in the the whole Thing. <laughs> it just creates this little fault line across there and that's very very subtle but it adds so much detail to it and I, I personally just love that little thing there these little details that all add up and they they create a very cool thing instead of just what I thought actually looked pretty pretty cool was just the big field just setting that stuff adds a whole nother a whole nother element to it but I've got one special thing I want to show you guys and of course if you guys are wondering that's the those are the shades we're going for and I thought I'd give a, give a little bit of a sneak peek. I mean, we're on episode 106, if I'm correct. Maybe even 107, if I'm incorrect. But uh, this over here, in fact, can I move those shaders, those shadows a little bit further away? Uh, shadows, view distance, far, far, too far, way too far. I think that makes them a bit better. There we go. Then we don't get that little box around the sides there. So this over here is what I think is very, very cool. And I know we normally do a shaded world tour, but, you know, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Uh, with all these little pieces over here, just the wind blowing through, I'm fairly certain I can even get this to be even crazier than it is with the the, the little pieces of wheat wiggling around. But how awesome does that look? Look at that. Just around through the fields, not to mention the shaders themselves. But adding in this stuff over here, I mean, the shaders aren't what we, what we build this world for, but it definitely does look a lot better with them around. Man, that is awesome. So... A few things that I do want to add to this path, and I think they they will represent a lot of cool stuff around here, obviously, because this is a wheat field, it would be pretty representative of it. Uh, but it also creates a, a very different idea, and excuse the, the messiness of these chests. I, I did just get blown up by a creeper and uh, <laughs> had to do some some cleaning up. Uh, but uh, what what we have done, and actually while we're here, we may as well grab, I think I've, yeah, I've left them in the wrong thing. Uh, we may as well talk about what this other idea is, and, and that's a very cool idea, by the way, I think. Uh, a harvested part of these fields, and what I think will work very well for this is perhaps just going ahead and path blocking a huge area, which could be another older crop that's just been harvested, and I'm sure you've seen this yourself, and we can we can actually try it over here. Just pretend. Let's just let's do a little sample over here and kind of break these away. This will eventually get changed over. It's it's a very time-consuming thing, this. I'm not gonna lie, it's a very, very time-consuming thing, but it's it's very enjoyable. And I'm sure a lot of you guys will, will know where I'm going with this. Something along these lines over here. And by the way, if you guys wonder, my wheat is changed. That is, I know you're saying, well, Jancy, you don't change any textures. 
wheat has been changed to go along with the crops. That's the only reason we've changed it. And that was actually by a vote by uh, you guys. So <laughs> I, I personally was uh, was first off not for it, but uh, I was told to told to give it a go. And to be honest, I kind of like it. So we, we're sticking with it. Because it doesn't really make sense for this texture here to be bright yellow and the rest of it to be a fairly fairly realistic color. And also, of course, we, we took liberties with <laughs> with the sides over here with these little bands to change them as well. So let's get rid of this. We'll get rid of that there. Okay, maybe something along these lines uh, of these little, like, hay bale things. In fact, that, that does look like a one of the ones that have been picked up properly by whatever it is that strings them together. That's actually pretty cool. That's a, in fact, what we could do is along these sides, maybe do something a bit more like that and that. So it looks a bit more broken up and we can maybe just put a piece of carpet or something along those lines on top of there. Yeah, that could work quite well. Just a, just a thought. I thought that would be some food for thought. Let me know what you guys think about that. So that with this combination here, of course, would be be the, the prize winning combo. Oh man, if I can just place these correctly. Sheep, go away. I'm actually, by the way, getting rid of any sheep that go in front of me just because they're destroying this field. It's going to be an ongoing thing, but I just don't want them to get too out of hand. Yeah, that, that will work. That will actually definitely work. So I guess that will be one of our future projects with this piece. And I almost just lost my voice there. But uh, yes, I think it's a perfect time for us to go ahead and call it, a, call it a day. Call it an episode. The sun's going down. The cloud horse is flying high. And uh, we've got some pretty good stuff done today. So thank you very, very much for all the support and all the enthusiasm in this area, guys. I'm very, very excited for it. And it's awesome to have you guys with us along the way. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.